Hello YouTube and welcome to your second C Sharp tutorial and in this tutorial we're going to be covering variables. So we'll go ahead and select a new project. Now we'll select a console application and we'll set the name to variables. Go ahead and click OK. Now wait for that to load and once it loads you should get your module or your program.cs. Okay, so let me zoom in here. So I said module, that's in a different language, so just ignore that. So here we have our variables namespace, our program class, and our main method that is the first, me first method that always runs in any C Sharp program. And here's some stuff that is needed um, for the program to work. And we're not going to talk about right, that right now, so we'll just go ahead and minimize out of that. Now, everything in programming is made up of data types. Now, there's primitive data types such as integers, doubles, singles, floats, characters, um, booleans. These are all simple data types that you use to make your own data types. So let's say objects and classes, they're made up of these data types. So let's go ahead and use some of them. So to declare a variable, you just use a keyword. So int is an integer, which is an a number that can be positive or negative and it cannot hold a decimal place. So int is one of the primitive data types. And now what we can do is we can set the name. So int my int. So now that we've created a name for our variable, we can set that to a number. So what we've done here is we've used a data type, created a variable, and set it equal to 5. So whenever we reference my int, it will reference this number right here. So this number can continually change, but all we have to do is put in my int and it will know how to use it. So what we can do to write it out is type console dot write line and this takes an argument. Now the argument is a let's see, an int value. It says write the text representation of the specified 32 bits signed integer value. So basically, we're just passing an int to this, and what it does is it'll write it on the console. So we can do my int, and now what we can do is we can change the value of my int. So my int equals seven, and then we'll type console dot write line my int, and then what we need to do is type console dot read line. So what this does is read line waits for the user to press enter before the program will exit. If we didn't have this line of code in here, it would run through this and then exit right away because it doesn't have anything else to do and it doesn't need to pause. So we created this variable called myInt and it is of the data type integer and we used the equals operator to set a value for it, which is 5. Then we used console.writeLine and we wrote myInt out to the console. Then we use the equals operator again, and we set my int equals to seven. Now, since my int has been declared up here, we don't have to put the int keyword in here because the program already knows that this is of type integer, and it's looking at this. And you can see that when I click on it, each of the my int copies gets highlighted. And then what we went ahead and did is we wrote my int to the console again so that we can see the changes here. And console dot read line is going to wait for us to press enter. So I'll go ahead and run this. Here's our console, and you can see we have my int right here when it's set equal to five, and then it's changed to equal to seven, and it prints that out. And now when we press enter, the program will close. Now there are a bunch of other data types um, that we can use too. So we can use a double. So we can do double my int. Now let's change this to my double, or for now we'll just say my var for my variable. So if we write my variable to the console, you can see that we're going to get something a little bit different. Well, actually, we get five here. So let's set this to five point zero, and it'll print out five again. So even though it only printed out five, it's a type double. So we can set it to 
and we get a decimal place in here. Now if we try to do that with an integer, it would give us an error. Now we can also use Boolean values by using the bool keyword. So Boolean values are very useful. They hold a value that's either true or false. So let's set this one equal to true. And if we print out my variable, it'll say true. And you can see that it starts with a capital T. So it isn't printing out what we set it to, it's printing out the Boolean value. So this just means it's true, and when we use it, um, it has a true value, but it's not the text that is right here. So what that would be is a string. So a string isn't, ver isn't really a primitive data type, but some people consider it to be. So we can set a string by enclosing any characters inside of double quotes. So let's just go ahead and make this look a little bit different. And when we print out my variable, it's going to print out a string for us. Now, similar to a string, we have characters, or char. Now, a char is one character. So let's say A, or the minus sign, or C. Those are all characters. So in order to make a character, you just use single quotes and then put one character inside of it. And then when we print that out, it gives us F. So go ahead, practice with making some variables. You can set them equals to something using the equals operator. Um, and if I remember to, I'll have a link to a chart of primitive data types in the description. And don't forget to stay tuned for the next tutorial.